Hey, great times. Uh, so in today's lesson, we're going to go over um, trigonometry ratios of acute angles, which should be mostly review of grade 10 material. Um, so we are starting a new unit, which is uh, always kind of nice to start fresh. Um, so we're going to be going over the trigonometry units now, um, and hopefully you'll find them okay. Um, like I said, of some of the, at least today's lesson is going to be a bit of review of uh, of grade ten material, but obviously after that it is going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, I feel like unit five, I'll be honest, is a little bit tricky. There's a lot of new material kind of uh, joined in there, but if you have a good foundation, then you should be fine. Uh, so first recap is just what are the primary trig ratios? So we have three primary trig ratios, which are basically based on the ratio when we compare two of the three sides in a triangle. Um, and we actually have special names for these ratios when we compare them. Um, so when we are comparing sides, um, you're actually labeling them based on what we call a reference angle. So let's say that this reference angle is B, and I'll talk a little bit more about the, the labeling of sides, although hopefully you remember how to label sides. Um, we first of all label, there's one side in the right triangle that's very special. It doesn't change no, regardless of what your reference angle is. And that is called your hypotenuse. And we know hypotenuse is special because it's always across from the 90 degree angle. It's also the largest side in the right triangle. And um, it's, it's it, like I said, it has more special properties that will stand out from the other two sides. The other two sides are labeled either opposite or adjacent. And it just depends on whether it is directly opposite of the reference angle or whether it is adjacent, which means that it is simply next to the angle but not the hypotenuse, right? So this would be considered the adjacent side. Um, so depending on which th which of the two th which two of the three sides we are comparing, we're going to be using the sine ratio, the cosine ratio, or the tangent ratio. And I feel like in grade ten, you might have learned a little nice little um, shortcut for this. Sokatoa, um, and Sokatoa is a nice little way to remember. Um, it's a little acronym we can use to just simply remember what the ratios, what the trig ratios are. So if it's sine, we're looking at the opposite and the hypotenuse sides together. If it's adjacent, we're looking at the, sorry, if it's uh, co a cosine, which starts with a C, we're looking at the adjacent hypotenuse side. And if it's T, um, then we're looking at the tangents ratio, which uh, compares the opposite side with the adjacent side. So in general, what we are looking at, so in a question, how do we use these ratios? What you're doing is you're first identifying the reference angle. Um, and this reference angle is the angle you either want to know or you already know. So you either know it or you want to know. And we denote this a lot of times we're going to uh, call this theta. Um, you can call it angle A or angle B. It doesn't really matter, to be honest, if you have different um, labels for this, but especially when you get to university level math, uh, you will start seeing a lot more of the theta, which basically is another way to reference your angle, okay? Um, so based on whatever the angle is, your reference angle, you're going to label your other sides accordingly. So as an example, in this angle up here, K, the opposite side is going to be the 12. The hypotenuse is obviously across from 90 degrees. And the adjacent side is simply, I always call it the leftover side. I think that's the best way to remember it. It's basically the side that has not been already labeled, right? So the hypotenuse is obviously special. The opposite side is pretty clear. It's directly across from the angle you are uh, referencing. And then the adjacent side is simply the leftover side there, okay? Now, if you have, let's say that you have labeled um, all three sides, then really you can use any one of any three, any one of the three trig ratios that we have there. Uh, but generally speaking, what we tend to do is simply focus in on two of the three sides. And then that's gonna indicate whether you use sine, cosine, or tangent. Um, so again, really important, you need to know how to label your sides. I cannot say that enough. Um, and we will talk a little bit about this really briefly, but to be honest with you, I'm going to assume in this lesson that everyone knows how to label your opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse side. And if that's not the case, please let me know as soon as you can. And I can definitely explain this to you in more detail. Um, but what I do find difficult about trig, um, trigonometry is, I mean, if you don't know how to label the sides, you're going to have a tough time. That's the reality, right? Because you won't really know which trig ratio to use. But if you already know how to label it, then it's actually not too bad, right? Um, so how do we label the sides based on the angle given to us? Well, I hope you first realize that the opposite side is going to be BC. And we can sometimes, we can label the sides in different ways. We can either label it by the vertices that 
um, the, the, sorry, the start point and the end point. So B and C here. So the two vertices that kind of um, close in that line segment, or we can label it as little a, because it's directly across from the capital A angle, right? Uh, so we can call it BC or little a, okay? So normally when we talk about capital, when we uh, use the capital, we're referring to the angle, lowercase, we're referring to the side length. Um, we can tell here, obviously, that this is the hypotenuse, and how do we know it's a hypotenuse? Well, it's pretty obvious that it is directly across from the 90 degrees. So this is AB is gonna be our hypotenuse right here. And then, of course, the last side that it does not have a label already is our adjacent side, and that's AC. So that's how we label the three sides of a right triangle. Here's another example. How do we solve for X? So if we want to solve for X, what we first do is figure out, okay, well, what is my reference angle? And what are the labels of the sides based on the reference angle? Well, first of all, we notice that we have a hypotenuse side. So we have a hypotenuse. We have the opposite side. So we look at this and say, okay, I have hypotenuse and I have uh, the opposite side. So which trig ratio am I going to use? Well, it would make sense that I would use um, so, uh, the first part, which is so, which means I'm going to be using sine in this case, right? Because sine is the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to definitely be using sine in this case. So I set this up and I have the sine of 30 degrees is opposite or hypotenuse. So what is my opposite side? My opposite side, we already said, is um, x. And my adjacent, sorry, my hypotenuse side is 10. And if you put this sine 30 into your calculator, and hopefully everyone knows how to use your calculator buttons on here. I didn't really go over that because I am going to assume everyone knows how to use it. You're looking for a little button that says sine um, or sin, if you want to call it that, but it's supposed to be sine. Uh, it's just a short form of it. And uh, you're going to be pressing that button there and you're going to put sine of 30. And depending on your calculator, you sometimes have to put the angle first and then press sine, or you put sine and then the angle. It just depends what kind of calculator you have there. You should have 0 0.5 though. Okay. Um, so your next step here is you're going to multiply both sides by 10. And the reason we're doing that is because we're trying to isolate for x, right? Or you could cross multiply to solve. But I mean, at this point, I think everyone can see what we're doing here. We're just multiplying by 10 so we can get uh, x by itself. So 10 times 0 0.5 ends up, ends up giving me um, 5. So that means that x is equal to 5. So hopefully that made sense. And then that means that the side length of x is going to be 5 centimeters, uh, depending on what the unit was. I actually forgot what the unit was in this case. I can go back. It doesn't say the units. So if it doesn't say the units, just say centimeters or um, you can simply put units. That should be fine. Okay, here's another example. Find the missing side length of X. So to find the missing side length X there, uh, we are simply going to identify what the reference angle is. So our reference angle in this case is 52 degrees. And that means that the opposite side is going to be X, which is actually what we're interested in. And the side directly next to it is going to be 31. And this is our adjacent side. So because we're looking at the adjacent and the opposite side, um, it hopefully makes sense that we would be looking at tangent because the tangent ratio is opposite over adjacent. So our opposite side is x. Our adjacent side is 31. So we sub it into our formula. So we have the tangent of 52 is equal to x over 31. And now your next step, you're going to grab a calculator. You're going to figure out what the tan of 52 is. Now, when you do this, and I'm actually going to show you how to do this, um, I would suggest that instead of you actually figuring out, in the last example, there was, there was a reason I left it as is, is because, um, to be honest with you, the numbers worked out really nicely anyways. But generally speaking, um, you probably prefer to, uh, you would probably prefer to just keep, um, to just write it as tan of 52 when you're showing your steps. And just keep keep track of all the numbers that you end up getting when you multiply, right, on your calculator. And again, do not round until the very end. This is very similar to what we did before. So you're going to take the tangent of 52, and you're going to multiply by 31. And you end up getting 39.68 if we round it to two decimal places. Uh, so notice that I didn't take, what I don't want you to do is take the tangent of 52. And then this is what sometimes students will do. And they take that answer and they say, oh, it's 1.3. Then they take 1.3 and then they multiply by 31. And 
then you end up getting 40.3, which doesn't seem like a big difference. And it's very close to that answer, but notice that it is off a little bit, right? And especially if it's a multi-step question, if you're off in the first step, then the rest of the question is off. So you really don't want to round until the very end. So that's the little moral of the story there. Make sure that you keep the tan of 52 directly, find out exactly what it is. Don't erase it from your calculator until you're fully done, okay? So take the tan of 52, multiply by 31, and you end up getting your answer, which is 39.668, and that is our rounded answer there in units. Let's look at another example for x. Okay, the cosine of 35. So we're going to find out what the cosine of 35 is, and Notice that in this example, I did decide to leave it as an answer, a rounded answer, but it's actually, I wrote 0 0.8, but it's actually not 0 0.8, and I want to be clear on this. Oops. So the cosine of 35. So I wrote 0 0.8 just for simplicity's sake, but in this case, I just kept the answer as was. Um, so I took my answer here, 0 0.819, sorry, 8191552, blah, blah, blah. And since I want to take this and I actually want to divide 8 by that, and the reason I'm dividing 8 by that number, keep in mind, is because in this case, I am multiplying, I have to try to isolate for x here. So if I go to this example here, so we're not, we're not done with this question, but I just want to show you what we do here to isolate for x. So I want to get x by itself because that's what I'm trying to solve for. So in this case, you're going to have to do a little bit of um, shuffling here. You're going to have to move the x to the other side. And you do that by multiplying by x. And the reason I do that is so I can get x. Eventually, I can get x by itself on one side. Then I realize I can divide by 0 0.82. Or instead of 0 0.82, I can divide by the cosine of 35 degrees. That's what I have there. So I'm going to divide by 0 0.82 on both sides. And I end up getting x is equal to 8 divided by 0 0.82 approximately. And it's actually not the correct answer. It's actually uh, 0 0.819152, blah, blah, blah. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my calculator right here. And I'm going to store this in my memory. And again, I'm not sure how you use the memory button. I know everyone's calculator is a little bit different. Um, so I store it in my memory here. And then what I'm going to do is take 8 and I'm going to divide by the memory that I have there. And it ends up giving me an answer of 9.76698. Uh, so I can actually round that to 9 point. Um, again, it depends if I'm around to one or two decimal places. If I'm around to two decimal places, I should round it to 9.78. And I can actually change that because I think I made a mistake. I did not write 9.7, sorry, 9.77. Um, if I am around to two decimal places. So I can definitely change that because I think I've made a mistake there myself. Um, but hopefully that makes sense so far, what we're doing. Okay, last example, or sorry, two more examples. Um, so if we have the tangent of 30 degrees, then again, we're going to follow the exact same steps. We're going to figure out what the tangent of 30 degrees is. And keep in mind that I would recommend that you don't round this. And I hope I didn't actually round it. I know, I think when I initially did this, I was kind of showing all the little steps there. You don't, I would just prefer you to just write the tangent of 30, right? You don't have to write 0 0.8. Just continue it on. Multiply by 25. And then when I multiply by 25, I end up getting 14.43, which is uh, correct. So I got that exact answer there. So tangent of 30 degrees is, and then I multiply by 25, that ends up giving me 14.43, that is correct, so it is good. Uh, so one small note to make, um, you're going to notice that the tangent of of, um, of angles, the tangent ratio of different angles, can actually, um, can be more than one. Uh, I obviously, you didn't see it in this example, but if you take the tangent of, for example, 70 degrees, you can even put this in your calculator, the tangent of 70 degrees, you get 2.7474, and so on. Um, so you'll notice that that is, it's possible to get a tangent ratio of more than one, but not cosine or sine. And I'm just curious, I won't put this on a test, but I'm curious if anyone knows why we cannot do that. So why it doesn't work for cosine and sine? So I'll give you a little hint. It has something to do with the fact that cosine ratio and the sine ratio both have hypotenuse in the denominator, right? So we know the cosine ratio is adjacent over hypotenuse and the sine ratio is opposite over hypotenuse. So I think it has a little bit to do with the fact that we are both, in both scenarios, you are dividing by the hypotenuse. And when we divide, and obviously the hypotenuse is larger than the opposite side, right? Because it's the largest side in the right triangle. 
and it's also larger than the adjacent. So it would make sense that if I take a number that is smaller um, than the denominator, then my answer, my ratio will be less than one. So the tangent ratio doesn't work that way because it's opposite over adjacent and you can have an adjacent side, uh, sorry, you can have an opposite side that is larger than the adjacent, right? That's possible in that case. Um, again, this is not something I'm gonna test you on, but just curious if you're wondering why um, sometimes the tangent ratio or the cosine ratio or sine ratio will not work, right? Um, it's not, it could be a calculator error, but it could also be that maybe you made a mistake in between, right? Um, so now we're going to be looking at how to find the angle if you are given the ratio, right? So in all the other examples, we were trying to find the side length. Now we're trying to find the angle. So what we do is we use um, the inverse trig ratios or trigonometric ratios, which are the buttons on your calculator say sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse. Again, make sure you know where these buttons are. So let's give an easy example here. Let's say the opposite side is six and the hypotenuse is 8.5. So find the angle measurement A. So if the opposite side is six and the hypotenuse is 8.5, that means that the sine of A is six over 8.5. Uh, we figure out what six divided by 8.5 is. And what I would do is grab a calculator and simply take six and divide by 8.5. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the sine inverse of that. So to take the sine inverse, I go to my trig uh, commands here. I'm going to press second command, and then I'm looking for the sine inverse. What sine inverse does is it, it, work it works backwards. It's a command where it basically says, okay, here's your trig ratio. What was the angle that gave me that trig ratio, right? It's working backwards there. Um, so it's an inverse function, right? So we click on this, and then we end up getting 44.9 um, degrees, and that is our degree measurement there. Here's another example. Um, and then this one, you're given a picture. So if we want to find the missing angle in the right triangle, again, we notice that this is our angle theta, which is our reference angle. And the hypotenuse in this case is 34. And the adjacent side in this case, the one directly next to it, is going to be 15. So that means that we're going to be using cosine because we have adjacent and hypotenuse. Um, so the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is 15. The hypotenuse is 34. We grab a calculator, and we figure out what the cosine of 15 over 34 is. And I would, like I said, I, you could obviously find out what 15 over 34 is, but I would just simply take, uh, when you're writing down the steps, take the cosine inverse of 15 divided by 34. So then I'm taking the cosine inverse of this, and I end up getting 63.82 degrees. And I really don't have to round it to do decimal places. One decimal place is fine. Um, and then that's it for that question. So again, it's always a good idea to look at your, especially when you're solving for an angle or even the, all the other questions, always look at the picture and check for the reasonableness of it, right? Uh, so we look at this answer and we say, okay, does that look like it's about 63.82? Yeah, it looks about reasonable, right? The pictures are not always drawn to scale, but you should still have an idea of whether it's relatively reasonable for, um, based on the drawing or not. And even if you look back at all the other questions, hopefully you were able to realize that they made logical sense. Like, for example, this one, I can tell you X is definitely larger than 8, and that is definitely the case. The X was 9.7. Same with this one. We can see here that 25 meters um, and H should be somewhat close, um, but obviously H is going to be smaller, and that kind of makes sense because it's 30 degrees there. So it's obviously not drawn to scale, but it should be relatively close or reasonable at least, right? Um, okay, so last thing I want to talk about is reciprocal trigonometric ratios. Um, so oftentimes we're going to be using, we're going to be working with the reciprocal of uh, primary trig ratios, which are known as reciprocal trigonometric ratios. And they are defined simply as the reciprocal of the trig ratios, right? We know what the reciprocal is, is when we are simply trying to figure out what number we multiply by, or what value we multiply by to give one. Um, so if we look at the cos, um, the inverse of one over sine, we know that obviously one over sine theta multiplied by sine theta is going to end up giving us one because these cancel out and give us one there. So it actually has a special name. It's called cosecant, and it's uh, it's actually labeled as CSC theta or cosecant theta, and it's going to be one over sine theta. 
So instead of, um, and we know that in our sign ratio, we have opposite or hypotenuse. So then this makes sense that the reciprocal of opposite over hypotenuse, oops. So think about it this way. This is our sine ratio, right? So if we're doing the reciprocal of sine, uh, the sine ratio, we it would make sense. And I'm going to erase that. It looks kind of messy there. It makes sense that the reciprocal of opposite over hypotenuse is going to be hypotenuse over opposite, right? We simply just reverse the numerator and the denominator. And the same thing goes with uh, the secant ratio, which is the reciprocal of cosine. Uh, the cosine ratio is just going to be hypotenuse over adjacent instead of adjacent over hypotenuse. And of course, the cotangent ratio, which is the reciprocal of, which is going to be the reciprocal of the, tan uh, the tangent ratio, it's just going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So hopefully this makes sense so far. Um, the three reciprocal uh, trig ratios are called, and the, how we actually call them is cosecant, and that's CSC. Secant is CEC, and the cotangent, the COT is, uh, we, uh, sorry, the cotangent ratio, we normally uh, denote it as COT, right? Cotangent there. So again, what we notice is that instead of having uh, trig ratios of, of uh, for, for the sine ratio, instead of having opposite over hypotenuse, the, cos the cosecant ratio, which is the reciprocal, is going to be hypotenuse over hypotenuse, over opposite. The secant ratio, which is the reciprocal of cosine, is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent instead of adjacent over hypotenuse. And the last one, in the tangent ratio is opposite over adjacent. And now the cotangent ratio is going to be adjacent over opposite. Does that kind of make sense so far? Hopefully that's kind of clear. I know it sounds a little messy, but basically all we're doing is switching the role of the two ratios, right? I'm sorry, the two sides, right? So you simply uh, switch around, you know, the two sides that you're finding the ratio of. And if you want to find the ratio, um, then you basically go through the exact same steps of identifying the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse of the reference angle. So it's not too difficult. Um, the only difference is that you're going to have to, uh, when, when, once you identify what the opposite hypotenuse and adjacent sides are, you're just going to be looking for um, the reciprocal ratio. But really, it's not that different. So here's an example of this. Let's go through this. So you're given um, an angle here, angle B, and you're asked to find the six trigonometric ratios for angle B. So we assume angle A is a right triangle. So the opposite side is 12. The hypotenuse is 15. And the adjacent is 9. Right? Let's start with the easy stuff, right? Hopefully you understood, understood how I got that. Um, like I said, labeling the sides is extremely important. Hopefully you were able to figure that out relatively easy, easily. Uh, you know, this is the opposite side, this is the hypotenuse because it's directly across from A there. And again, oh yeah, assume angle A, I was gonna say, we have to assume that here. And of course, um, angle, the side length that is left on its own, which is the a, which is side length A, AB, or it has a side length of nine, then we know that that's gonna be the adjacent side. So now that we know all three sides, we can simply find the trig ratios. Let's start with the primary trig ratios. We know that sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Our opposite side is 12. Our hypotenuse is 15. So it's 12 over 15. And one really important thing, we always want to reduce this to lowest terms. That gives us four over five. This is extremely important, by the way. Um, it's going to help us to solve a lot of different problems. So make sure you know how to do that. Uh, so you reduce it to lowest terms. It's four over five. The cosine ratio is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is nine over 15 and that reduces to three over five. The tangent ratio is going to be 12 over 15, sorry, 12 over nine, and 12 over nine reduces to four over three. So that is our tangent ratio there. Um, so now that we know the sine ratio, cosine ratio, and the tangent ratio of angle B, how can we find the reciprocal ratios? Well, it's pretty easy. All we're really gonna do here is switch the role of the numerator and denominator, right? So the sine, uh, the cosecant ratio is going to be 15 over 12, hypotenuse over opposite. And really what that becomes is four over five. Notice that we just switched the numerator denominator. Uh, you can pretty much take a guess what you think is gonna happen with when we try to find the secant ratio, right? So we know the secant ratio is the reciprocal of the cosine ratio. So instead of five over three, it's three over five, it's gonna be five over three because we're simply comparing the hypotenuse 
over the adjacent. And in this case, it's 15 over nine, which reduces to three, five over three. And finally, the cotangent ratio is simply gonna be the reciprocal of the tangent ratio. So it makes sense that it's gonna, instead of uh, 12 over nine, it's gonna be nine over 12. And then we write that, we simplify that as three over four. And those are six primary trig ratios there. So how do we calculate uh, the trigonometric ratio if you are given a calculator, right? Uh, sorry, with a calculator. So unfortunately, in the other examples, um, um, as you as you notice, there isn't necessarily an easy way to actually um, determine what. Sorry, there's there's actually no calculator button for your reciprocal um, trig ratios, and that's what one thing that tends to um, make people feel uneasy with this, right? Because they look at this and say, well, there is no calculator button for this, but you can still work with this. Um, you just have to kind of go about it a different way. So if you uh, to, so if you want to find the trig ratio for an angle, let's say you're given the angle instead, obviously the last example was easy because we we're given a picture, but if you're not given the picture, so what you're going to have to do first is calculate what the primary trig ratio is uh, using your calculator. So find the primary trig ratio first. And then of course, if you wanna find the reciprocal value of that ratio, um, it's actually not too hard. All you need to do is simply um, use the reciprocal function on your calculator, or you can take the answer that you have and raise it to the power of negative one. Um, and I feel like that would be probably the easiest thing, raise it to the power of negative one, because that will automatically give you the reciprocal. Or you can simply write all the numbers down and then take one and divide by that answer, right? Pretty simple. Um, if you want to, if you want to figure out what the angle is, if you're given the, uh, reciprocal trig ratio, so let's say you're actually trying to find the angle, um, then you're, what you're going to do is you're actually going to find the reciprocal of that ratio, right? And then what you're going to do is then find the inverse primary trig ratio to determine the angle. And again, this seems really complicated. It makes a lot more sense when we look at an example. So let's look at an example. So if you want to evaluate the cosecant, uh, sorry, the co <clears throat> cosecant ratio of 15 degrees uh, to four decimal places, again, there is no cosecant uh, button here. So what you're going to have to do first is figure out what the sine of 50 degree, 15 degrees is. And the reason we find the sine of 15 degrees is because we know that the sine of 15 degrees, so we know with the sine ratio is the reciprocal of the cosecant ratio. So we take 15 degrees. And we are simply going to find the sine ratio of that, which ends up giving us 0 0.2588 and so on, right? Rounded. Now, this answer is good so far, but remember that we are trying to figure out what the reciprocal of the sine ratio is, right? So if we want to find the reciprocal of that answer, then we can simply take one divided by that, or there is a nice little button you can use for this. You can raise this to the power of negative one. So if you do that, it will automatically give you what the reciprocal is. And so it's basically the exact same thing as um, taking one divided by that answer, right? So if I take one divided by 0 0.2588 rounded, I end up getting approximately 3.8637, an approximation of it. Um, here's another example. So in this one, we are asked to determine the value of the angle. We're asked to find the angle if you are given the secant ratio. So if you're given the secant ratio, which is um, 1.4526, how can we find out what the angle theta is? Well, the first thing I would do is I would switch this into a primary trig ratio because we know how to work with primary trig ratios. So what you're going to do is simply find out what the primary trig ratio uh, which is cos uh, cosine theta is going to be, right? So the equivalent cosine ratio would just be one over 1.4526. And again, we know that because it's the reciprocal. So we grab a calculator and figure out what one divided by 1.4526 is. And it's approximately 0 0.6884, uh, sorry, approximately 0 0.6884. And now what we're going to do is find out what the cosine ratio is of 0 0.6884. So find out what the cosine, which angle, that's what I meant to say, which angle gives us a cosine ratio of 0 0.6884. So we're given the ratio. And again, we're working backwards. We know the ratio, the cosine ratio. What is the angle? That's what we're trying to figure out, right? So what angle would give us a, co what angle would 
give us a cosine ratio of 0 0.6884. So we grab a calculator and figure out what that is. And again, all these answers are rounded. And my suggestion is keep these numbers stored in your calculator, right? Do not erase them. So we're going to take one and we divide by one, uh, 1. 1.4526. And now we're going to find the cos, uh, cos inverse of this uh, ratio here. And again, we're doing the cos inverse because we are working backwards. So we're given the ratio and we want to find the angle. So press on, you click on press cos, sorry, press on cos inverse here. And we end up getting an angle of 46.49 uh, 49, uh, 49 uh, degrees, right? Which we can round to 46 degrees if we want to round to one decimal place, right? To the nearest degree. Again, be really careful with this. If you keep rounding, then it just makes it more complicated, right? You're gonna get further and further away from the correct answer in the end. Uh, so wait until the very end, until you can actually round, okay? Um, and here's another example. If we're given that the tangent ratio is three over two, uh, let's find the reciprocal trig ratio for this. Um, and then after, let's find out what the angle theta is. So first thing, if the tangent ratio is three over two, then what is the reciprocal trig ratio? Well, it's gonna be pretty easy. The cotangent ratio would be uh, two over three. We simply um, swap the numerator and denominator there, right? So two or three over two as a ratio, the tangent ratio becomes two over three as the cotangent ratio. And if we wanna find out what the angle is, um, we obviously wanna make sure that we work with the primary trig ratio and not the reciprocal um, trig ratio, right? Uh, because again, there is no button for the cotangent. Um, so what we're going to do is we're simply going to find out what the tan inverse of 3 over 2 is. And the tan inverse of 3 over 2 is 56.3. So all we did here to find out the angle was, um, again, this is like inverse operations, right? We want to move the tangent over. Think of it that way. Uh, we're taking the tan inverse of 3 over 2 to figure out what the angle is. So again, it's basically asking, we're basically saying the tangent ratio is 3 over 2 what is the angle that gives us that ratio, that tangent ratio, right? And it would be 56.3 degrees approximately. And there's a homework. So best of luck. See ya.